Looking for speedy sewing projects? Well, search no farther. Today you'll learn how fleecy fabrics, easy sewing techniques, plus very simple patterns combine to create comfy accessories. Polar fleece, velour, and flat back knits are just a few of the fabrics that can be transformed from yardage to fashion and home accessories in short time. The two-in-one scarf is a great place to begin. As a scarf, it hugs around your neckline. As a hoodie, it keeps you warm when the weather turns brisk. It's a super quick project. Fast and fleecy accessories. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing Designs and Class A Needles. Let's begin by talking about fleecy fabrics. It's a very wide topic covering the traditional polar type fleece fabrics that are thick and lofty, used for outerwear, always having the greatest amount of stretch in the crosswise direction, more stable in the lengthwise direction, can come in a variety of weights, but then there's more. We call it fleecy because you could use velour, stretch velour for these projects that we're going to be working with. Again, greatest amount of stretch in the crosswise. Even embossed velour, they're called flat back knits because the back is flat, a traditional knit background with a very textured top. We even have one small project that has the fleece and the suede doesn't have stretch, it's just stable. So you need to check if your pattern that I'm going to ask you to work with needs some stretch or not. You can see the variety of fabrics you can work with. A yard will create many of the projects and perhaps out of one yard you can get two projects, which is the case with the two-in-one scarf. Sorry, I was wearing this scarf earlier that had the, can be used as a scarf or hood and the shape is simple. It has a curve for the hood and it's open in the back. And there's one simple seam, a great beginner project. And the seam edges are finished just with a cut of a blade, a specialty blade, so that you don't have to do any serging or sewing for this simple first project. Throughout this series, I'm going to be giving you a variety of seam finishes or edge finishes for fleecy fabrics. You're welcome to interchange the techniques that I'm going to be showing you. I'm also going to be giving you the sizes and dimensions for these pattern pieces. You can make quick notes or you can accompany it or it's found in the book that accompanies the instructions. For this first one, you're going to cut a piece of paper that's 16 inches wide by 33 inches long. So out of a yard of fabric, you'll be able to get this uh, two scarves. And then you can see some different shapes within that rectangle. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is measure down seven inches from the top of the one short end and fold the tissue paper. And then from the very bottom, you're going to measure on both sides in one inch, one inch measurement and one inch measurement. From the left side, you're going to taper this to the seven inch measurement, way up to the top. That will give a slight shape to the back of that scarf. From the right side, you're simply just going to measure up one inch all the way to that fold, the seven inch measurement. Subtle changes, but we found this gave it the best fit. Then as I unfold this seven inch section from the top, that's where you'll see the shape of the hood. Again, as we look on the, the left side of the shape, you'll see I just used a dinner plate and curved that dinner plate to get the shape of the hood. And then in the front, at that seven inch measurement. On the other side, it just tapered to the very corner. So it has, you can see that slight subtle change. You cut out your pattern pieces and you pin the section together, that seven inch section, and sew the curve of the hood. 
Here's a close-up. You can serge it, you can sew it. We're just using a very simple straight stitch to do that stitching. And now, after that stitch, you can simply trim the edges using a decorative rotary blade and just follow along the cut line, just trimming off some of the fabric, and you have that decorative look. So with one row of stitching that shapes the hood and a rectangle of fabric that has been slightly tapered so that it fits around the shoulders and creates the hood and can frame the face with a two-in-one scarf, you have a perfect first fast and fleecy project. When you feel chilled, the best way to be comfy is to layer with a fleece wrap. Designed to hug your shoulders, this wrap will assuredly stay in place. See how you can easily make this no-slip wrap with fleecy fabric. We take a close-up look at the finished wrap made with a yard and a half of fabric. You'll see that it has a V-shape in the front where the ends are tapered. This is kind of a mirror image or a we're designing it after the way the back is shaped. The back also has a V-shape and the important seam is right at the angle where two rectangular ends are sewn together allowing the wrap to hug around your shoulders. We found that the button loop and the button are more of a decorative accent than a necessity because of the way the wrap is designed. It just stays in place, but this is a nice option if you have a fun button to put, put in place. As I mentioned, a yard and a half of fleecy fabric, whether it's traditional fleece or the knit flat back fleece, it doesn't matter. All the same dimensions will apply. The two pattern shapes that I have are half scale, so the measurements are double what you see, and I'm going to give you the measurements as they would be in actuality here. 54 inches in length for the large rectangle, 54 by 20. And the second rectangle has that same 20 inch width by 34, so it's shorter by 20 inches. To get the shape at the points at the center front, we're going to fold the tissue pattern so that you have a 45 degree angle. And you would like to fold them so that when it's put together, the points will be at the center front. Now a little slate of hand, allow or shape the tissue paper so that they will be adjoining in an L shape. And you'd meet right sides together and this is your seam, the only traditional seam. If you're going to be using a turned under edge, which we have all around the outer edges of this no slip wrap, please stop stitching at that interior corner about a half of an inch from the intersection because you'll need to turn under those edges and top stitch a little bit later. So stop stitching there. If you're going to trim it with a rotary cutter, you can go all the way to the edge. This is our, as I mentioned a couple times already, one traditional seam and you can kind of see how this is coming into shape. Now as I turn this the way it's going to be worn, again this is half scale, then you would turn under the edges. Turn under the raw edge just a fourth of an inch, oh, three eighths, whatever you'd like. There's no significant measurement here you need to follow. And then top stitch all the way around the edges. And because the fabric is so fleecy, those stitches are buried in the nap and you'll never see if you stitched a little bit of skew or not. So it's a very forgiving fabric. So around all of the edges. And then if you'd like to add a button loop or in a button, that's an easy thing to do. Put it on. Determine where you'd like that button to be placed. And then depending upon the size of the button will depend, of course, how long to make the loop. We like to cut a piece of fabric that's about an inch and a half wide or so. And then maybe a little, about six inches long, full to the center and then fold the ends so that you have folded it in four places and then stitch the edges. It, it's fast, there is not any very couture technique here, it's just edge stitching then that loop into place and creating the wrap, the no slip wrap. So again, a yard and a half of fabric, some rectangular shapes, 54 inches by 20, 34 by 20 and then make the 45 degree angles at the corner and with some simple sewing and turning under the edges you'll have a fast project that's very wearable. 
cozy, yet without being bulky. That's what best describes the cowl scarf. Snap closed, it hugs your neckline without layers under a jacket or coat. If buttons are more your style, add detail with easy to sew buttonholes designed specifically for knits. We named this program Fast and Fleecy, and it certainly are descriptive terms of the projects that I'm going to be showing you, particularly this cowl scarf, very fast to make, and it's a rectangle of fabric, even though at this point it certainly doesn't look like a rectangle. When I snap the three decorative snaps, you'll see that it's one long rectangular shape. In fact, the size that you're going to cut of your fleece fabric is 18 by 36. 18 by 36 for both of these cowl wraps. You're going to fold wrong sides together so that you have a nine inch length. Here's a fold and then we have, you can see the, the length in this area. So it's very quick to put together. Now you get the cowl wrap because you meet the ends in an L shape. We put these decorative snaps, sewn them on the inside and you can wear it open as Sara did earlier, or you can close it up. So it's, it's a great project. All, these edge finishes, all the edge finishes that we have in this program are simple. Straight stitch the wrong right sides together, and then if you, again, like to use that decorative blade, just trim off the edges. And you have, to, you have quite a few layers here, so push down and just cut through all the layers, and it pulls it off and you have a neat edge finish. Add those snaps. The blue wrap that you saw Sara wear is a little bit more detailed. Has the stretch velour, knit fabric, very lofty, but this edge finish is needed, a surged edge finish, because this fabric has a tendency to ravel just a little bit. So we'll make uh, some provisions with the, with the serger. Again, the same dimensions. So here we have the serger set up for a three thread overlock stitch. If you're a serger owner, perfect time to use that overlock stitch. In the upper and lower looper, we've used texturized nylon thread, the thread that has lots of give and stretch in it, much like the fabric. In the needle, just all purpose thread. So three spools of thread, cones of thread for a serger. Do some testing. When you're working with this fabric that has a lot of give and stretch to it, you may want to consider doing some stitches. Straight stitching the edges together. Again, we have wrong sides together, but curves are not a friend of a serger, at least when you're making fast projects. Use a dinner plate, or I'd like to use a template that is made for serging, and you can, in your rotary cutter, you can place that around the edge, align the edges, and then simply cut. A little easier to cut when you're on a, on a table, but you can see that you can round those a little bit to help it out. Now we're just going to surge around the edges. I'll lift the fabric. You can take off just a, a small amount of the fabric if you'd like so that you can trim off the excess little thread whiskers like we often call it. And as we go around the corner, do a test so that you can adjust the stitch length. Just guide it very carefully. And as I come around again, go a little faster and keep surging the edge. And the stretch nylon thread will accommodate the stretch of the fabric equally as well. I'm going to finish this portion later on. It takes me a little bit longer than I have time for it, but then I also want to talk to you about the buttonholes. The buttonholes going through this layer of fabric, place some wash away stabilizer, sandwich it on both sides of your scarf. Mark the placement of your buttonholes. And here you can see that I'm using a stretch buttonhole stitch. Notice that the stitches are further apart that they're, and they have the built-in utility stretch so that it accommodates the fabric your machine will easily adjust the length. So you have five buttonholes, five buttons, and another version of this wrap. Here's a comfy scarf that requires no knotting or fasteners of any kind, making it less bulky. Best of all, it always stays tied. 
You saw Sarah wearing this lovely scarf quick to make, made out of a fourth of a yard of fabric with an opening along a narrow end so that when you place it around your neck, you drape the longer end through and it's a graceful scarf made of knit fabrics. You can even make it of woven fabrics. It has many, many options for this. The pattern size is simple. We're modifying rectangles of fabric and I'll show you how to work with a fourth of a yard which is nine inches, nine inch length of fleece-like fabric and it's 40 inches, nine by 40. So that's the total length and you see some measurements in taper marks. At the one short end I've measured in two inches from each side giving me a five inch width. That will be where the center back seam will be placed and that five inch measurement was tapered down to that nine inches. So it's a very gradual taper all the way to the very end of the scarf. You're going to be cutting two of these. But there's a measurement that's really important before we go to the fabric and that is to measure from the five inch marking to measure down eight inches. And I have little cross hash marks in this area and this will be where we'll turn under the edges for the opening of the scarf. I've seamed my two rectangles together on this next sample and here's a quick little fourth of an inch seam. Just finger press it open and then finding that eight inch clip or, or a clip at the eight inch mark. I should rephrase that. It's just a fourth of an inch clip that I would press that 16 inches between the areas of the neckline. So you'd press that under or pin it under in this instance and then just top stitch this edge. So between the eight inch clips you are going to be turning under the edges and stitching. It goes very fast from here on out because now you just meet right sides together. So you could do that or you could meet wrong sides together. I guess that's what I'm going to do. Here is here are wrong sides together and another seam finish option for us is to just meet these edges and since knit fabrics ravel very little if they do, this one has a nap, it may ravel just a slight bit, we're going to zigzag with a multiple step zigzag creating a raw edge finish. Here's a close up. You can see that I'm stitching that triple stitch multiple step zigzag. And when you're complete, it has a little indentation because of this embossed fabric likes that stitching. But these are raw edges. You don't have to do any more turning. It's quite a clever way of finishing fleece fabrics. And here you can see the opening that has the nice clean finish and then you can simply tie it as I showed you earlier. But there's an option. Sarah's wearing another option of this self tying scarf. This time we have a zipper added like to put some coins or keys when you're taking a hike or going to a football game perhaps. You could keep something stored there very at making it very handy. And only a pocket is put in one end of the zipper of the stealth tying scarf excuse me so you can st put some little change in that area whatever you'd like. I think it's kind of fun to work with. So to do this on just one of the pattern pieces you measure up five inches and split cut across and work with a seven inch zipper and some ribbon, some grow grain ribbon. We have stitched some grow grain ribbon to the end of each zipper and then trimmed away the excess zipper tape so I don't have bulk in the seam. And then before doing any more stitching to the scarf we'll just simply place grow grain ribbon on the top of the zipper and edge stitch. So your unit looks something like this. So it's the zipper highlighted with grow grain ribbon. On your scarf you could turn under the edges by a fourth of an inch. You'll be doing pinning of course. And then simply place your zipper on top and top stitch all this together. On this particular scarf we met right sides together. As I mentioned earlier we met right sides together and did traditional stitching and then when you have the edge finished around the neckline with that turned under edge and traditional stitching, you now have another option of the self tying scarf made with just a fourth of a yard of fabric.
sampler quilts have been inspired by a myriad of topics such as seasons of the year, holidays, and botanical images. Soon you'll see a charming sampler quilt inspired by children's essays from the early 1900s, children who wanted to win a Shetland pony with a saddle or carriage. I'd like you to welcome Lurie Hurd. She's an author, a collector of the Farmer's Wife magazines, a quilter and history sleuth. And Lori, welcome back to Sewing with Nancy. Thank you. You were with us earlier with the Farmer's Wife Sampler Quilt Book. Mm -hmm. And you did a lot of research, and now you've furthered your research. Yes. In, in the early 1900s, the Farmer's Wife magazine wanted to increase their readership. And so they started a contest. They hired children from about the ages of 5 to 12 to sell subscriptions to their magazine. And you found these, these letters of children who won the prize. Yes, very rare. And the prize was a pony. A pony and a carriage and a saddle. So you put this collection together. These stories are just so charming of thank you letters to the magazine. Mm -hmm. And then you, you paired quilt blocks with the stories. Yes. And that's why you're here. Right. Because we have quilting, we have history, and I, how many Shetland ponies were given away? In the course of the 12-year contest, there were over 500 all over the United States. So you have 90 of them written yes. here. Yes. And 90 quilt patterns. Mm -hmm. And what I found so charming were some of the stories that the thank you notes that the children wrote. Yes. They're really more than thank you notes. The children tell what life was like 100 years ago uh -huh. in America. And you have pulled some excerpts, and we're going to show you some great photos. Yes, here is one from a little boy. Like all Western boys, I like to play cowboy, and I have a dandy cowboy suit that I wear. I ride <laughs> judge around and lasso cattle just like real cowpunchers do. He won the little pony Judd yes. from this contest, and then you paired it up with a... A block. Yes, and his quilt block is Cowboy Star. And you found that these were actually named that. These are classic quilt blocks. Uh -huh. I did not change any names. It's, and then you made this wonderful sampler quilt with all 90 of these blocks. Yes. Oh, they're all 8-inch blocks, and they're a lot of fun to sew. Why don't you read another uh, story? This one is by a little boy named Wilford, and his <laughs> pony is Larry. There isn't a store in town where Larry hasn't been in. He goes in the drugstore, and the druggist knows he wants ice cream, and he bows enough to say yes. He gives him a cone of ice cream, and Larry will eat every bit of it, and then asks for more. Then he will drink pop and root beer right out of a glass in the drugstore. The druggist gives him some gum, and he will chew the gum, and I am <laughs> on his back all of the time. Oh. Children were very often allowed in uh -huh. houses and stores. With, Very common with, with their ponies, with their yes. Ponies, with their Shetland ponies, and here is uh, Larry, and and, <laughs> and Wilfred. Wilfred, and oh, excuse me, and if you can uh, see the size, you know, the height of the little pony, the yes, height of the child. they're very small often. Uh -huh. And then the quilt block that you paired with this is Village Schoolhouse. He talks about how he takes the pony to school with him. Very, very clever. And more. I know you have more. You have many more oh, stories. Oh, so read. many, so many. <laughs> Go ahead. We have Hector. Uh, Hector rides on the automobile sometimes, and that makes him feel like he is the biggest horse in the country. But when he's down again, he sees he's only a little Shetland pony. <laughs> I was riding into the house one day to see what Mama was doing, but she turned me out because the pony was chewing on some sugar. He's always climbing on the table looking for something to eat. I, I couldn't help but really spend much more time with this book than I had time to spare because <laughs> reading these stories and then looking at the adorable blocks and the period fabrics that you put with them are, are very charming, Lori. This, this block, tell me about that. That is named Verna Bell's favorite. The little girl in the picture here is Verna, and she has a little sister named Violet. Well, what a charming collection of stories, quilts, history, sewing and quilting all put together. Thank you for being my guest. Thank you very much. And I'm sure you'll enjoy reading more about the Farmer's Wife Pony Club. You can go to nancyzeman.com where you'll find all things Sewing with Nancy, streaming video of the most current 52 shows, 
And when you click on Nancy's Corner, you will find the information on Lori. Just click on Lori and you'll get more information on the Farmer's Wife Pony Club and all the interviews that I have during this segment. Next time, we'll be back with more fast and fleecy accessories, quick ideas to make with that fun fabric. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now. Nancy has written a fully illustrated book entitled Fast and Fleecy Accessories that includes all the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2521. Order item number BK2521, Fast and Fleecy Accessories, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.